Everybody, welcome back to the next episode of Dialing In for our Line 6 Helix. This one's kind of an exciting one because we're taking a look at one of the coolest new uh, effects blocks that we received as part of Helix Firmware 3.0, and that is the Glitch Delay. Very, very interesting effects block that I've been messing around with uh, a while now. Um, gives almost uh, some really beautiful chaotic sounds in it. I know if that might seem even contradictory, but you'll see what I mean when we uh, dive in and take a look at it. So let's just jump right over to it and see what we've got. So what I'm doing here is using a very simple path here, just to keep things really simple. I have the new US Princess Amp uh, at these settings, which are almost like default, I believe, with the 112 US Princess uh, cab, stock cab, and I've just simply slapped a glitch delay after it. Now these are the settings that come up by default. Let's just hear what this does. So just at those settings, some pretty interesting sounds. Now what you're going to notice about this is there's a certain randomness to a lot of these settings. Even when you understand the parameters, it might be kind of tough to get this to do something that you sort of pre-planned out as some of the settings are designed to just kind of randomize the outcome, which can be really cool and give some really neat effects. So let's do this. Let's take a look at uh, what each parameter does, okay? And I'm first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in and take the delay div, feedback, slice feedback, shuffle, octaves, reverse, and smoothing all down to zero. Turn the trails on, not that we need it, just because I'm going, not gonna be switching off of this. And we'll talk about some of the simple uh, features of this delay. We have our time, which is gonna be like any other delay. Delay time, which we can do in the standard setting here, stock setting is one second, but I can switch, I can go all the way up to four seconds with that and all the way down to 10 milliseconds, or I could just switch this over to note sync, which is what I'll use today if we want something timed with a specific tempo. Now the mix control is just like on any other delay as well. It's gonna blend our DI directed unaffected signal with the signal of the delay and the echo. So if I put this down to zero, I get nothing. If I put that up to 100, I get nothing but delay. And if I put that at 50-50, I get roughly equal DI'd sound with the echo. Now you notice this is just right now acting as a normal delay. Okay, I could add feedback into that. Which is just gonna give me more delayed repeats. So really nothing special going on there. Well, it's in the other parameters where the magic kind of lies within this. All right, so let's take a look at delay div. And what this delay div does is it divides the delay time into smaller increments. So let's just start with what we have here. If I raise that up, You see how it kind of chopped this normal sort of quarter note delay? It's very predictable and lands on the beat. I'm at 120 beats per minute, mind you. So now it gives us almost this kind of random slicing of the previous delay. As we raise that up higher, Back to turning that off. Very predictable. If I go way up with it. We 
we get this strange kind of slicing of our original delayed echo. Let's just put that at eight for now and see what happens. So we can hear these echoed repeats are kind of sliced up. All right, so then we go and we see something called slice feedback. And I'm just looking at the release notes here to make sure I'm describing these all correctly. It says, controls the number of repeats heard for individual slices. At higher values, you could call this a super chaotic feedback. So as I bring this in, those slices that were created are now going to get more and more repeats as well. So let's listen to this. We can see some pretty neat things we can do. So that's gonna be the feedback for these individual slices we create with the delay div. As we see there, it's not as chaotic. Okay, so now let's give a little bit of that for now. Now the shuffle control determines the likelihood of repeats shuffling or reordering. So instead of being so organized, I guess they're gonna kind of maybe get out of sequence. Let's see what happens with that. kind of does just raise the likelihood of that sequence that we've created just kind of reordering and shuffling around. So we have also other settings we can go with it. So pretty interesting stuff there. So now we have an octaves control and the octaves control determines the likelihood of the repeats playing back an octave higher or lower. So this is kind of random stuff here. So here we hear it. Those repeats just keep the same notes that I played. Let's bring the octave control all the way up. Very big difference from when we have none of this play with the octaves or the pitch. Maybe we just want a little bit of possibility of those octaves changing. We bring that down lower.
Really interesting stuff and so many possibilities with this. Now we have a reverse control which determines the likelihood that the repeats are going to play backwards. Okay, and this is a really cool control. Let's go up with this all the way. I'm going to bring our delay div down. We can hear more this sort of backwards reverse playing now. Pretty neat stuff. And the neat thing with this too is I have the mix control 50%, but if I just wanted less of that, bring that way down. You know, something like that combined in with a nice big reverb Really beautiful stuff in there. Let's turn that reverb off. So we got some really neat things we can do with the reverse uh, function on that. And really cool thing to do would be to bring that feedback up maybe, go with mix on 100%. To get some of those kind of cool reverse guitar tones. Sequence drift determines the likelihood of the entire sequence changing every time it loops around. When it's set to zero, it's going to just loop the same way forever. So let's just do something here, I don't know, uh, as such. So let's see what this does. We see that it's pretty orderly. Now if we set sequence drift to 100, That stays very solid and predictable. We see how it kind of moves around and shifts. That's pretty cool. And then finally we have the smoothing uh, control which it says higher values apply smoothing between slices and can give a synth pad type quality. Lower values maintain transients or set it just high enough to avoid pops and clicks. And you can hear some of these kind of pops and clicks that are part of this. It is called the glitch delay. So if I put the smoothing up to 50. If I bring my mix back down, 50. Again, I could just bring that all the way back. Add some reverb in with that. just tucked in underneath the unaffected signal.
almost gives the effect of playing over some sort of synth pad, right? So some beautiful stuff there. So, I mean, there's so many possibilities with this delay once we kind of have our head around what each function does. And I hope I was clear in explaining kind of what each of these do. I'm experimenting as well, just going by the release notes and experimenting with these different things to kind of get my head around what they do as well. But I think I'm starting to sort of figure it out here. Um, you know, we could do some really cool things where we don't have to use all of these features, right? I could just say, maybe I want like I was showing you before, a nice sort of backwards effect where I set the delay div to, to, to one, reverse up to 100, you know, feedback to 60, and then uh, my mix really high to 100%. smoothing. So some really beautiful atmospheric type sounds, almost synth-like in some ways, you know, or we could go with something that's gonna be way more chaotic than that and just kind of add in a lot of the randomizations, uh, you know, uh, a little less reverse, see what happens. <laughs> Kind of harkens back to maybe some stuff Steve Vai did on Passion and Warfare, some of those crazy effects, really wild stuff. And again, bring our mix down. <laughs> Maybe we want it just as a real sort of pad underneath. some really interesting tones in there. So it's gonna be the type of thing you're going to have to experiment with to get your head around what each thing is actually doing and how it reacts when you do certain things. But there is a lot of great tones and a lot of great uh, atmospheric sounds built into this that if we understand how to manipulate it, it's going to give us a lot of options. And this is quickly becoming a, a real favorite of mine. Uh, I'm gonna probably use this a lot for sound design and, and putting little little subtle pads underneath recordings of, of mine just to add something to a mix. Is, it, it would be a really interesting way to use this and a really great addition to our Helix with this uh, 3.0 firmware. And, and again, hats off, I keep saying it, but hats off to the folks at 
Line 6 for doing such a bang up job just making all these new effects and, uh, and features just so usable and really raising the bar on how amazing the Helix is. And it always was amazing and now it's even more amazing. So thank you to those guys for, uh, for continuing to improve it and give us so many things to work with. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, kind of walking through this effect with me and I hope that helped you to understand how it works. Uh, I hope I got everything right. I'm, I'm kind of learning along with you on this one, but I think I have a pretty good handle on it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please share the video with anybody who you think would be interested in watching it. Uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll have a lot more content coming up very soon. Uh, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out and I will be back real soon. Thank you so much again for tuning in and ciao for now.